bum 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 hey 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 2.1 quadratic functions yay 2.1 quadratic functions um what we're going to do is we're going to look back over some parabolas and we're going to analyze some graphs of quadratic functions. We're going to write them in standard form, also known as what you may have seen in the past as vertex form. And we're going to use results to sketch graphs. And then we're going to find max and min values of real life. What you talking about, Willis? Applications. All right, so whenever you have a quadratic function, you have the equation f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. This is called your quadratic function. This is um, where a, b, and c are real numbers, not fake numbers, you know, like some of your friends. Um, so the first thing we're going to look at is vertical shrink and stretches. If you have your parent function, which is f of x equals x squared, this dark line here, and what we're going to do is if you choose to graph the function g of x, but you throw a one third out front. Well, that's a vertical shrink. And the way you find that is, well, if you plug a one in for x in your parent function, well, one squared is a one. So you'd have over one, up one is where that would be. And if you go over two, then two squared is four. So you go over two, up four. If you go over three, you'd go up nine. That's correct. Uh, if you go back one, up one, back two, up four, back three, up nine, you're always squaring. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to take that value we square, and then we're going to take one third of it. So for your g of x, you're going to take your x that you square. So we're going to say if we go to the right one, we square that, you get a one, and then take one third of that. That gives you one times one third, so your point would be at a one third. Same thing if you go to the right, two, square that gives you a four up here, but one third of four is a one and one third. That's a four thirds. So what you get is you're really squeezing a graph down a little bit when you are shrinking it, but you're taking one third of your y value. <clears throat> Same thing with a vertical stretch. If you have your parent function here in the dark, right? um, over one, up one, over two, up four, it's right here. Well, if you are vertically stretching something by two, then that means you are going to take your values and your y values multiply by two. So if you go to the right one, square it is one. You normally go up one, but we're going to take that one and multiply by two gives you two. If you go to the right two, square it. You would normally go up four, but in order to go up enough, you're going to go up eight. So your next point would have been up here. So what you're going to do is you take whatever you square and you just multiply by two. Um, on page 92, there are different characteristics for your function you may want to look at. And it talks about your domain and ranges and all that fun stuff. Um, so let's look at our first example here. Notice for the first one, we're going to sketch the graph and describe how it's related to your parental function. So if you have a negative 1, 6, well this negative first means you're going to have a reflection or it's going to reflect over the x-axis. And then we have this 1, 6. Well, this is a vertical shrink. Vertical. Let's get burned. No, I'm not seeing that. Um, all right, so vertical shrink. What that means is your parent function, since you have a reflection of your x-axis, normally your parent function goes starts at 0, 0, goes to the right 1, up 1, to the right 2, up 4, to the right 3, up 9, or you go to the left one, up one, to the left two, up four. So your parent function looks like this. Well, we are going to reflect it, and we're also going to shrink it. So we're going to flip this over, but instead of going to the left one and down one, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the left one and down one sixth, because you're going to take your y value and multiply it by one sixth. So we're going to go down one sixth right about here. And we're going to go to the left two, and instead of going down four, we're going to take four times a negative one sixth, 
which gives you a negative two thirds. So you can go back to down two thirds, which is right here. And then if you go to the left three and down nine, usually, well, you take that nine and we multiply that by a negative one six, which gives us a negative three halves. And back down one and a half. So you get this super wide graph. And remember, you can always reflect it going over this direction because a parabola is the same no matter what. So what we get is a really wide graph whenever you shrink it. Um, <clears throat> now on B, what we have here is we're going to have a um, horizontal shift. And you have to remember, whatever you see inside your parentheses, you do the opposite. So if that says plus 2, you're going to go left 2. And then we're also going to have a vertical shift. That is what is on the outside, your negative 3, down Three. So we don't change the shape, how wide your graph is or anything. Um, you know, if you have your parent function here, 0, 0, over 1, up 1, over 2, up 4, back 1, up 1, back 2, up 4. Here's your lovely parent function. La, 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 lovely parent function. Well, what you're going to do is you're going to take the same graph and you're just going to shift it to the left two, so I'm going to take this point, I'm going to go left two, and I'm going to go down three. Here's my new vertex. It's still opening up, and it doesn't change like its width or um, how wide it is or how skinny it is. So if this is your new vertex, you can go to the right one, up one, to the right two, up four. You can go to the right three, now we can go up nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Go to the left one, up one, left two, up here, and we just mirror this image. Here is your graph, your new function, your h of x. Shifted to the left. I should probably uh, label each of these. That would make good sense. So that is how you can use your characteristics of your parent function, along with what you've learned about stretching, shrieking, and reflecting to graph new new functions without doing any uh, fun little graphing or without doing tables.